Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers. And this video is number four in a series of lecture videos on complex numbers. Let's get started. Last time we talked about the polar form of a complex number. Hopefully you'll remember if you've seen the video. If you haven't, please go ahead and check it out. I made a bunch of videos and I'll continue to upload more lecture videos. All right, so we, we can basically plot a complex number where theta is the angle as shown. And our complex number a plus bi basically is represented by an ordered pair a comma b as you can see. So we talked about some sine and cosine values and remember the absolute value of z is also denoted by r, right? That's the modulus. And then we can find the sine and cosine and then by plugging those into z equals a plus bi, replacing a with this and b with that, we do get our number in this form. r times cosine theta plus i sine theta, where r is the modulus and theta is the argument, which is shown as arg. We'll talk about that. So this is called the polar form. Remember, theta is supposed to be in radians. Okay? So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at some of the examples and then we'll go into more details later. So how do we write a number in polar form? Let's go ahead and take a look at this. First of all, we need to turn this by looking at the real and the imaginary parts. We need to turn this into an ordered pair, which is going to be 1, 1 in this case. So it's pretty much the same thing as plotting 1, 1, which is going to appear here. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect it to the origin with a line segment, right? Hopefully I can do this straightforward line, yes. And that length is going to be my r or absolute value. So, and theta is defined as this angle and it's very easy to find. So one of the things that you're looking at is tangent theta is one and theta is in the first quadrant. Therefore, theta needs to be pi over four and r is equal to the hypotenuse which happens to be square root of 2 because it's 1, 1, root 2. Make sense? Great. So under those conditions, we can go ahead and write this. And remember, the form was like this. R times the quantity cosine theta plus i sine theta. So R is going to be on the outside. And then we're going to write cosine theta, which is pi over 4. And then I times sine theta. So this is our number in polar form. Make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at another example. Let's go ahead and write z equals i. So i is a pure imaginary number. It has no real part or real part is zero. So when I write a number a plus b i, I'm talking about a being zero in this case. So what does that mean? It just means that we're looking at zero comma one as an ordered pair, which happens to be right here. So I'm going to go ahead and connect it to your origin, which shouldn't be hard because it's basically staying on the y-axis. And then this is the origin. And the ha distance between 0, 0 and 0, 1 happens to be 1. So r equals 1 in this case. What about theta? Think about it. It's the angle between the x-axis and this segment. So that would be pi over 2, which is the same thing as 90 degrees. So we got r equals 1 and theta equals pi over 2. You have everything you, you need. Now why don't you write it in polar form? Let's go ahead and do it. z equals r, which is 1, times cosine pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2. And of course, since r is 1, you don't need to write it. You can just write your number as cosine pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2. Again, the angle is going to be in radians. Pi over 2 is in radians. Make sense? Easy, right? And later on, we're going to talk about a more compact way to write this. Uh, thanks to Euler, we'll talk about that details later. Okay, let's do one more example. I think uh, through many examples, you'll get a better understanding. Hopefully, that's how I kind of try to learn complex numbers. Can't say I'm an expert or even like uh, probably a beginner. Anyways. That's a different story. So z equals 2, is it a complex number or is it a real number? Or is it both? Remember, we talked about the definition and we said that all real numbers are also complex numbers. So that's a subset. In other words, 2 can be written as 2 plus 0i with the imaginary part being 0. So now I can basically 
one to one correspondence to the ordered pair two comma zero. You see how there is a bijection between a complex number and an ordered pair, which is an interesting uh, story, by the way. Anyways, two comma zero is what I need, and that is right here. Awesome. What I need to do is connect it to the origin. Let's do it. Okay, this time didn't work. I was hoping that uh, Desmos was going to give me, uh, not Desmos, Notability was going to give me a straight line, but it didn't work. Let's try this. Yay. Okay, that worked. Pretty much that is the connection between those two points. And notice that R is equal to 2 because the imaginary part is 0. So we're on the real axis and R is 2. What about theta? Well, there seems to be no angle, so theta is going to be 0 radians. But you can also write it as 2 pi, 4 pi, so on and so forth. We'll talk about that later. There are infinitely many values for theta, but the, the principal value is just going to be 0 radians. So we can write 2 as 2 times cosine 0 plus i sine 0. Or if you want, you can write it as 2 times cosine 2 pi plus i sine 2 pi. And if you want it, you can even write it as multiples of 2 pi, which is 2 pi times n. Okay? Cool, cool. So, here comes the Euler's formula, which is going to be very, very helpful because what happens is you don't want to write this lengthy expression every time like cosine theta plus i sine theta, and thanks to Euler, this is unbelievable. This is just amazing, you know, mind-blowing. This relationship, if you look at the Taylor series expansion of cosine and sine and then evaluate this and you're going to notice that it's equivalent to e to the power i theta, which is, I think, amazing. Okay, words can't describe what I feel and what I mean. Anyway, so we are able to write this as e to the power something, which is nice because this is the exponential function. And this should look familiar because when we wrote our complex number, we wrote a plus bi as r times this. So now our number, complex number, can basically be written as r times e to the power i theta, which is great. Very compact form and very, you know, uh, economical. Great. So we're going to generalize this, obviously. Like I said earlier, you can add multiples of 2 pi to your angle because what happens is on the unit circle, you can basically start at some angle. Let's say you get here. This is your theta. And if you add 2 pi to this, you're going to get to the same point. Add another 2 pi, you're going to get to the same point. You can do this infinitely many times. If n is an integer, basically theta can be written as theta plus 2n pi. And then you just replace theta with that. But this is the, the principal value that we're going to use, but you can definitely come up with infinitely many values. So here's the next piece of exercise we're going to do, writing the following complex numbers in polar form using Euler's formula. And again, let me just copy down the, the most compact version here so we can kind of practice with this first. But we're going to do that next time. So this is the end of the fourth video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and stay tuned for upcoming videos. See you in the next episode. Bye.